Hello, my name is Paul Perito from Perito Urology. I'm here today to talk to you about a disease process that affects almost every man if you live long enough. I like to tell you, my, my patients, that if you live long enough, it will affect you. Across the glo globe, there's probably 500 million men that suffer from benign disease of the prostate. Benign disease of the prostate is a, as we say, a benign process where the prostate enlarges which is a normal process of growth for uh, the, the human male. And the growth leads to some impingement upon the outlet of urine from the bladder. This results in symptoms from leading from anything from retention to urgency to frequency to waking up all night. These are all things that affect my patients in their, in their life, in every aspect of their life, in that sometimes they can't sleep well enough and they can't go to work. Sometimes it actually leads to a depression in some of my patients. Because I have an, a practice that is almost exclusively uh, evaluating men with erectile dysfunction, 100% of my patient population de desires the ability to maintain ejaculatory function. When we go back and we look at the treatment plans for any patient with benign disease of the prostate, the first line of treatment is medicines. Medicines are great. 70% of guys are able to tolerate them. I said tolerate. Tolerate means that they will suffer from 10 to 50% retrograde ejaculation, meaning the ejaculate goes back into the bladder. Uh, another 40 to 50% may suffer from dizziness, orthostatic hypertension, um, and even, you know, just headaches in the morning that can lead to, to you not functioning well, which was the goal of um, giving you those medications. The second line of therapy has always been some surgical uh, uh, form of treatment. The, the two that are most recognized would be the laser ablation of the prostate, which is a process where we, we basically burn the prostatic tissues and this is a process that has been used for at least 15 years and has fairly decent results, but the gold standard of surgical therapy was the transurethral resection of the prostate. A transurethral resection of the prostate is a great operation, but you have to resect a significant amount of tissue. There is a lot of things that go on postoperatively that are considered normal. Uh, there's bleeding. It's considered absolutely normal to have some bleeding. Urinary tract infections because you've had to maintain a catheter from anywhere from say two to five days depending upon the extent of your transurethral resection. But in, in my practice the most important thing is that at least 50% of guys are not going to ejaculate out. It's a dry ejaculation. It retrograde ejaculation, which I referred to before. I have a model that I would like to show you, and I've used this model for 15 years in my practice it, because it, it just it demonstrates so beautifully what happens when you treat the prostate any other way than the, the form I would like to, that we're going to talk about later, which is the Urolift. If you look at this, this model of the prostate, these, this is the bladder here. Here's your prostate. The penis is here. You see all this blue ink because I've done this thousands of times. These lobes of the prostate are what impinge upon the urethra and make it difficult for you to void. Now, this little duct right here, this is the, that duct that's so important to my patients. This is the ejaculatory duct. In a normal situation, the bladder neck here closes and the ejaculate goes out. Now, imagine that we have violated this bladder neck, which we do with pills because that opens up the bladder neck and anywhere from 10 to 50% of the time, depending upon the pill, or you surgically violate it with either a laser or a transurethral resection. And those numbers for that leading to retrograde ejaculation are anywhere from say 10 to 50%. I believe if you do a really good TURP, it's a 100% chance you're going to have a, a retrograde ejaculation. For years, for years, I, uh, I tried to spare the bladder neck and it led to, you know, more bleeding afterwards, more urinary tract infections, some uh, ongoing retention. I actually performed Herculean efforts to maintain the integrity of that bladder neck. Now, I found a new technology, and it's not that new anymore. It's actually, it was 
the technology was started approximately six years ago. It's been it's been uh, it's been utilized in Australia and Europe for a couple of years, and it was approved by the FDA last year for for utilization in the United States. The Eurolift is a technology where there is a polyester fiber that basically has a titanium and a stainless steel anchor on either side. Now imagine that you have a set of drapes and you open them up and you have ties that tie up those drapes so that it remains open. That's exactly what the Eurolift does. And it is that simple and that beautiful in that in, in less than a few minutes, it, you're able to open the prostate and have a permanent chamber that through which urine can flow, but we have not violated that bladder neck. Remember the bladder neck I talked about before. If the bladder neck is closed and the drapes are open, you're going to be able to void and you're also going to be able to ejaculate normally. Uh, the other beautiful things about this technology are that uh, you know, there's very little bleeding. Uh, I can send patients home without a catheter many times, so we're gonna avoid all those post-operative urinary tract infections. Um, I can, you know, because we can do it in the office, it's done under local anesthetic. There's no other anesthetics uh, that uh, could rise to complications. And it, it is a procedure where the, the downside, which would be a couple weeks of urgency, frequency, maybe a tiny bit of bleeding, are nothing compared to the previous options, surgical options that, that I've had available to me. And my patients, I can do absolutely no harm to my patients under, getting ready to undergo a penile prosthesis or who have already had one when it comes to ejaculatory function. So now we ha I have a new technology that is a perfect, perfect mix for my patient population, patients that want to maintain their erectile, dysfun erectile function, want to ha maintain ejaculatory function, and want to be able to, to you know, not be bothered you know, by their prostate. So if you're bothered by your prostate, and you're on one of these, uh, and you haven't had any surgical therapy yet, and you're on pills, or you haven't even initiated the pills, you need to, to seek out a urologist that is familiar with this technology, and um, I think you're gonna be extremely happy. The best, best thing is, is we burn no bridges. If that prostate is not meant to undergo the Eurolift, we can always move on to a transurethral resection of the prostate. In my uh, uh, current series where uh, we're doing quite a few a week right now. Uh, we found absolutely nobody that's had to go that route. Everybody's maintained integrated uh, ejaculatory function and I'm extremely thrilled to offer this technology at Purdue Urology.